So Gavi's priorities are to try to get these amazing life-saving vaccines to everybody who needs them in the poorest countries. And in terms of doing that, we go through a complicated process to decide which vaccines we will prioritize based on cost and effect. But once that happens, then the board makes a decision, we raise finance. The challenge then is how do we roll it out? Is there infrastructure available? And how do we prepare for the rollout? How do we make sure the cold chain and the systems are in place? And then the actual implementation of that rollout. And of course, it doesn't end there, but ultimately to try to get the coverage up to a level where you know we're talking 90% in all, all districts. So initially, we started with the traditional vaccines and added on vaccines like hepatitis B for liver cancer, uh, haemophilus influenza type B for meningitis. Recently, we added vaccines for the two largest killers of children, diarrhea and pneumonia. So that's rotavirus vaccine and pneumococcal vaccine. Uh, we're adding now HPV vaccine for cervical cancer, rubella for uh, 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 German measles, and we'll be looking in the future for other potential vaccines. So Gavi has multiple ways that it ultimately tries to drive forward the sustainability of this effort because that's what it's about. And obviously one is to try to get uh, financing, external finance, I'll come back to that. But the second part of the three-legged stool is to make sure that the countries are investing in their vaccines. So all countries pay co-financing for the vaccine, the very, very poor countries at small levels as they move up in economic uh, strength. They begin to take on some more cost, and then as they get close to graduating, which is $1,520 gross national income, then they move up to full cost. But the third part of that then is an active market shaping program, which is to try to reduce the overall prices of these vaccines so they can be sustainable in these countries. In terms of the, the, the issues, in terms of where we get our money, um, we've been very lucky to have uh, support from both the public sector, uh, donors in the West, but also donors in, in the BRICS countries um, and um, foundations, uh, private sector donors as well. And um, as I said, one of the other critical issue is what the countries put in. I think the most important thing that got, effect of Gavi over the long term has been the fact that 10, 15 years ago, when you went to the manufacturers, they described the US, Europe, Japan, and then there was ROW, the rest of the world. By Gavi consolidating a market in the poorest countries, we've really created a market now that's very large. Uh, the birth cohort is over 70 million children, and that um, has meant that, that companies begin to think of that as an important market. Now, of course, that market is not as lucrative as the market in the West, but that doesn't mean that it isn't a market that needs to be served, and I think that's what's really changed. It's also meant now that there's been a lot of entrance of other companies. When Gavi first started, one out of the five companies that were supplying it were in the developing world. Today, the majority of the, of, the, of the companies are in the developing world, and we're seeing an explosion of companies now entering uh, the vaccine space. Well, well, vaccines actually, of course, are the most cost-effective intervention in the health sector. They're preventive, they prevent uh, long-term and short-term burdens. Today we have vaccines against cancer as an example of a long-term burden, but short-term diseases like measles, they can be devastating to a society. But the thing that's interesting is vaccines have a much bigger and important role. Healthy children lead to healthy societies. And we know that vaccination is, the, the, the power of vaccines is almost equivalent to that of primary education in terms of the cost benefit ratio. So a lot of work is going on to try to understand that. It's not only the, 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 the effects on, on the child, but also on the family because when, when a child gets sick, not only can't they, they can't go to school, they can't learn, but also the family in most of the countries we work in has to pay out of pocket for health care, which means that those families may be tipped into poverty. So when children stay healthy, the family can continue to work, the child can go to school and learn, and the families have more money to invest in their children. And that's a win winning situation.